What's the word, y'all? Yep, another blowout. Another blowout. Yep, uh, absolutely. But this one's similar to the one from yesterday. There's a lot to be said about these blowouts, a lot to be said about the games. I didn't upload yesterday. Some of y'all know that I'm a new father, and, and with the recent events in Texas, uh, my heart was extremely heavy. It was hard for me to watch Warriors versus Mavs and be thinking about content, taking notes about this game when there are so many bigger things to, to be talked about, so many different things to be to be thought about. And though thoughts and prayers literally mean nothing, um, those fans families are in my heart and I cannot imagine what they're going through. I, I, I don't even know what else to say. Um, but today we, we, we got another game. Let, let's talk about it. Hopefully this 15 minutes of content or whatever it is, is enough to keep our mind off of the things that are uh, tragically going on in our world. At the halftime of this game, it was ugly. Hold on. Look, actually, why, why am I acting like I don't got the stats? Let me get these stats for this ugly halftime. At halftime, the score was <laughs> 37 to 42, right? And they put a graphic up on the screen um, of the 2022 NBA Conference Finals. This is the first game that's within five points of halftime. We are um, four games into the the Eastern Conference in five games into here, and we finally got one that's relatively close. The Miami Heat, they were up by five points, and they were shooting 37% from the field, 19% from three. The Boston Celtics were shooting 38% from the field, 25% from three. It was ugly. Ten turnovers for the Boston Celtics, and it felt like every single one of them from Jalen Brown. He had a dramatic change. I don't know what the hell happened at halftime. He must have went up to Twitter because he was getting dogged on Twitter for that first half performance. It came out in the second half. It was dominant. Fourth quarter was dominant, but this game was extremely ugly, and I was like, even though it was ugly it was close and if it was ugly to this extent you know we might have a game where in the last two minutes somebody turned up and boom it's a close game we we thinking about last possessions we're playing a foul game oh we haven't seen intentionally fouling at all throughout the conference finals because no game has been close in the first half we kind of got that and i was like yeah the comments was flooding uh, uh, my mentors yeah kenny must be happy and things changed <laughs> things absolutely changed once we got to that second half and you know what's crazy um before this series the miami heat in the third quarter were dominating teams the first couple rounds of the playoffs when you got to that third quarter the miami heat he turned it up even if you look at game number one right game number one of the series the Miami he absolutely turned it up in the third quarters but since then the third quarters have been the third quarters for them ladies and gentlemen they have not been able to do anything and obviously you know that their star players labor and you cannot convince me otherwise Jimmy Butler is like extremely extremely injured right now but he's trying to play through it like a lot of other people Kyle Lowry trying to play through and we go talk we have a whole segment about Kyle Lowry because Jesus Christ how how do we get to this point Kyle how Second half comes around, and the one thing that was the advantage for the Miami Heat in the first round, and one of the reasons why they were up by five points at halftime is because they were getting a ton of second chance points. In the second half, they still did an amazing job on the offensive glass, but it felt like the second chance points weren't necessarily there. You also got Jason Tatum having a great performance. Now, I know he didn't shoot the ball very well, but the playmaker for Jason Tatum in this game was one of the best I've seen from him. Second half, Jalen Brown was dramatically different than first half, Jalen Brown. And then Derek White. Last game, I think the first quarter, <laughs> a lot of the damage that um, Derek White did last game was all in the fourth quarter, other than the great defense and stuff. And this game, boom, another great performance. He's getting the Fred Van Vliet boost. Uh, if you don't remember, Fred Van Vliet had a child, and then he turned into an All-NBA player basically during the playoff run. That's what we're getting right now from Derek White. So if you if you want to have an amazing playoff run, you have to breed at the right time. So once we get to, to uh, May, you're on fire. Because that's what we got from Derek White. So you got Derek White doing his thing. Basically, he filled the Marcus Smart role in last game. And now he did Marcus Smart things while Marcus Smart was still also there. Luckily, I mean, not luckily. Um, well, unfortunately for the Celtics, Marcus Smart didn't have a great shooting performance. But he had a clutch three down the stretch. But I, I'm pretty confident saying that this series is over. Maybe this is an all-time jinx and it might be. You know what I'm saying? I'm not rooting for either any other team. But there is, like, sometimes you watch a game especially a playoff game, right, and the losing team loses, right, and you're like, okay, I see this is something we could take away and we can expand on. The next game is going to be solid. There is, like, close to nothing redeemable about the performance we got from the Miami Heat. They ended with 80 points. They had 79 in the other game uh, earlier in this playoffs. They ended with 80 total points. It got Joel Embiid as a bystander tweeting about how they need a secondary star, and if you do not remember – um, this offseason, they gave out some bags, y'all. They gave Jimmy Butler a huge guaranteed deal. I'm not 
looking at Jimmy Butler's performance so far, thinking that um his contract is now terrible because these last three games, he said like 19 total points. Like I said, he's legitimately injured, but he's also 32 years old and he's guaranteed through 2026 where he's making $52 million. Well, not guaranteed. That is actually an option, a player option. Might as well be goddamn guaranteed because nobody's turning down a $52 million player option. So he's under contract to he's 36 years old. You extended Bam Adebayo to the max and he has gone completely ghost. You know what bothers me about Bam Adebayo, bro? Shout, <laughs> shout out to my, my boy Derek because Derek is the exact same way. You ever played sports with somebody that was so extremely talented that everybody around them knew that they could dominate other than them? That's how my boy Derek is. We will run fives and we know he could be the best player on the court, but he is his own defender. That's how I feel like Bam Adebayo has been this entire series. And he had the nerve and the fourth quarter with his game was basically over to start taking shots. I don't look at that final stat line and say you had a good game, my boy. I knew that those garbage time minutes, garbage time points. So he's just that dude that you know he can go out there and give you good performances. And then he just hasn't been able to do that. And that's that's a detriment to the to the entire team. Then you got Cal Lowry. Another guy you could tell is dealing with injuries. He's laboring out there. But you gave Cal Lowry a three-year deal where he's averaging around $28 million a year. He's already 36. You gave Duncan Robinson a $90 million contract, and he couldn't basically see the floor until last game. There was a ton of money spent by the Miami Heat, and yes, they won the conference as far as being the number one seed, but once you get to the playoffs, you're going to need to know how to score in the half court, and especially with Tyler Hero being out. They just don't have that, especially if Jimmy Butler can't give you 50, 70 percent of himself. They just don't have that. So you're looking at Jimmy Butler under contract to he's 36. Bam out of bio on the max contract for the next four years. Kyle Lowry at 36. 36 guaranteed to the next three years. Duncan Robinson's got a contract that goes as long as I don't even know how long. And then you also have to make a decision on Tyler Hero. I I would not be surprised if the Miami Heat looked dramatically different after the season. Pat Riley has given out a ton of big old contracts in recent years. Now, the one thing about Pat Riley is that even if he's giving you that money, he always finds a way to like, if it is a bad contract, get off of it one way or another, you know what I'm saying? So if Kyle Lowry is washed or I don't know if he's washed or he's really laboring on his injury, but still, he's 36. Father time don't lose to nobody. You feel me? He's 36, and you got him under contract to he's 39. <laughs> So he's 39. One thing about Pat Riley, he can maybe flip that and do whatever, whatever to get off that money. I don't really know. But they gave a lot of money to a team that looks like they're going to be a team that can compete in the regular season. But once we get down to the nitty gritty conference finals, they're going to struggle. And, and like we said in previous videos, this has somewhat been a race to, to health, right? One player gets somewhat injured, and if it happens to be your star player, it's wraps. And your star player's injured right now. Now you got to look at the other people. They got to look within and be like, in this game six, can we put up a fight? Because I these guys, like, they had held their head, bro. There was two – no, there was one possession. Where Victor Ladipo had two wide open threes and he hit all backboard on both. This team decided to go out there and miss 30 plus threes. I'm sorry. I, I, there's nothing redeemable about that. There's nothing redeemable about that, man. So I, I don't I don't really know. Cal Lowry gave him 24. I don't think he should be playing out there, bro. He's obviously not 100%. And he's obviously has not been an impactful player other than the first quarter of the game that he came back. We got Bam, um, Bam out of bio going. And that's what the, the game that Bam had 29 or whatever it was. He got Bam going in that very early on. But in this one, I mean, the flop, come on, man. Can we, do we have to talk about the flop and then go out there to give them zeros across the board? I'm sorry, he had a rebound. They get them zeros across the board other than this 5,000, three turnovers. That's a that's an all-time terrible performance. When your backcourt, your two backcourt players are 0 for 15 from the field, how do you win that game? The, the Boston Celtics didn't play a great game either. They just made a little bit less mistakes or made a couple more shots than the Miami Heat. And yeah, like I said, there's not a ton of redeemable things about this. Is there a possibility that the Miami Heat win this series? Sure. But based on what I'm seeing with Jimmy Butler being out there and just basically walking around, giving you four for 18, I'm sorry, bro. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. The fans were leaving early because they knew. They knew. They knew the hell was going on and that it was just not, it's not happening. So are we really preparing ourselves from the Boston Celtics Golden State Warrior NBA Finals, which is so very interesting. Two months ago, March 1st, 2022, um, I, I was called up by my people over at in Bleach Report and they were like, hey, Kenny, we got two minutes for you to fill on TNT. Have the floor, my guy. Talk about anything you want. And I wanted to talk about a team that I saw as a sleeper team. And at this point, remember March, um, March 1st, 2022, the Boston Celtics are 30, 37 and 27. They're in the midst of a legendary run. They are the sixth seed currently as I'm recording this video. And in this video, I'm talking about how great the defense, how historic a defense 
defense had been over the last month before that and how I believe they have a chance to make a I think I said Atlanta Hawks type run where they started out very poorly and found themselves in the conference finals boom I make that video I put it out there and I'm like okay I'm excited you know what I'm saying I got Shaq I got Candace Parker I got Adam Lefko I got um uh, Dwayne Wade all these people about to watch my two minute segment and they gonna have some comments my two minute segment runs boom and then Adam Lefko looks to the people he looks to Shaq he looks at Candace he looks to Dwayne Wade and say how do y'all feel about that Dwayne Wade said uh I don't I don't I don't what did he say he said like I don't believe in that or I don't know about that and here we are here we are one game away from being in the NBA Finals. I'm not I'm not a guy that's perfect on his takes, for sure. But there's one thing I got damn right. And I got dismissed on national TV. Love Wade. I, you know what I'm saying? I had an hour conversation with Wade. And I, I ain't bringing this up to him because it slipped my mind when you're talking to people that you mess with. Um, And I ain't, hopefully I get another chance to talk to him about this. But it, it was completely dismissed. Not, not even just about Wade. It was completely dismissed. My two-minute segment went and they decided to talk about something completely different. I ain't feel slighted in, in any way, but I was like, the Boston Celtics gonna make some noise, whether they believe so or not. And here they are, one game away from the goddamn NBA Finals, y'all. One game away. And even in my video, my two minute segment, I said, I don't know if they gonna make an NBA Finals, but I think they can make the Conference Finals. Even I, even I didn't have the the ceiling exactly where it should have been. But here they are, you know. I mean, I, I could go back and watch this video every once in a while. I'm going to look at, actually, let's go look at the comments. Let's go look at the comments. Congrats, Kenny. This was completely right. Look at Kenny. So inspirational. Here after Celtics swept the Nets. Yep. He was right. A month and a half, and he was completely right. Yeah. I mean, somebody said at NBA TNT, more Kenny Beecham, please. That would be dope. Hopefully for next season. I know TNT Tuesdays don't really exist anymore for the rest of this season. Hopefully next season I get like a weekly. So give me a weekly segment to just talk about random nerd NBA stuff, and I can do that. And and I'm not going to be right 100% of the time, for sure. But I might get some things right, and I can gloat about months later like I'm doing right now. So here we are. Boston versus the Warriors. Huh. That's That could be a good series, bro. That could be a really, really good series. So I'm excited about it. Even though it's not it's not actually in stone just yet, I'm excited about it. And I, I appreciate them giving us a relatively solid game, enough for us to talk about. Um, because today's video, if it, if it wasn't going to be talked about this, I really was going to deep dive into the all-NBA voting. And we might do that tomorrow or the day after that or whatever. Um, but there's some crazy-ass voters out there. Somebody voted Desmond Bain all-NBA third day. Listen, I'm a Desmond Bain believer. Before the season started on our podcast, I said I believe he's about to take the next step, and he absolutely did. I had him as my winner of the most approved player over his teammate, John Moran. But you got you out your goddamn mind if you think that Desmond Bain deserves to be an all, all-NBA player. I'm sorry. You're out your goddamn mind. He also had Mikael Bridges on his own ballot. And I don't know who the person is. I don't want to, like, count, uh, I guess, outs anybody. But come on, bro. Jalen Rose went on to national TV, and he owned up to his mistake. He had Kyrie Irving as an all-NBA player this season. Bro missed 50 games this year. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, half of the games, he wasn't even, like, super great. You feel me? I just... I, I agree with Tatum when he says that these awards, these All-NBA things should not be completely attached to the dollar amount that players can make because some people don't take it seriously. You had Desmond Bain on an All-NBA team, you didn't take it seriously. Especially when we have so many, and I'm not even just talking about myself, but you have so many people that take that shit so very seriously. I think my All-NBA team was identical, identical to the one that actually won. I took that very seriously, and I gave you adequate reasons. Even if you didn't agree with my, my points, I gave you reasons why this player's here, this player's here. You didn't have to agree, but I thoroughly thought these things out. There's nothing you can say to me that Desmond Bain deserved to be an All-NBA player over. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a whole video about these things, but I'm, I'm about to bring it up right now because I got to remember who he left off his ballot because it was crazy. I, no joke, I think it was Le LeBron was one of them. And if your argument is, hey, LeBron didn't make the playoffs, I'm like, okay, then you left... You he also left somebody else. I'm about to go bring up the... I'll be back. I, I, I got to do it. This voter's third team. This is their third team. Kevin Durant, Desmond Bain, Steph Curry, Mikel Bridges, Car Anthony Towns. Um, so we had all, he also had Mikel Bridges as an all-NBA player. Oh, LeBron did not make his all-NBA team. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Let me go through this again. Bro. Bro. Are you serious right now? Hold on. I cannot make this up. He did not have... So... John Morant didn't make his all NBA team. They make this so hard to read. Um, okay, so looking at all NBA, who did not make your list? So John Morant did not make his all NBA team, but Desmond Bain did. Ha ha. All right, we're gonna make a whole video talking about this. That's all I gotta say today. We we we'll see exactly how the hell things go, and I'll talk to y'all soon.